Stangibalisco here uh, to answer a, a question that many of you may have concerning the flow of current, and in particular direct current, through a capacitor. Uh, how can current, the transfer of charge carriers or the movement of charge carriers, take place across a gap between electrodes that, are, that is separated by non-conducting material, dielectric material, that's called. Uh, a good example is uh, ceramic. Another example is glass. Mica is sometimes used. Polyethylene, I think that's sometimes used, but any substance that does not conduct electricity, and that's in quotes. A capacitor is simply two electrodes, and air or a vacuum can also, by the way, serve as a dielectric. Separated two electrodes, metal conducting, separated by a non-conducting gap. How can direct current flow through such a device, and, and you may think that the answer is obvious. It, it certainly can't, because that intervening dielectric can't conduct electricity. In fact, that's specifically what it's designed not to do, is conduct electricity. And yet, in a capacitor, current can exist, direct current. And here's how it works. Capacitors are designed to hold an electric charge. They fill up with a certain amount of charge carriers on either electrode separated by the dielectric when you connect a source of direct current to that uh, capacitor. And then you can discharge that current by shorting out the two uh, electrodes. They usually conducting leads that go to the electrodes. And uh, sometimes you can get quite a surge of current when you short out those electrodes. And in, in some cases, in fact, if you look up Leiden jar, L-E-Y-D-E-N, uh, several scientists discovered uh, firsthand that uh, large charges can be stored in these devices by the glass dielectric separating the electrodes. It, sometimes the discharge current was so intense they grab it with their two hands, one hand on one electrode and one on the other. The current surge would go through their heart muscle and knock them to the floor. Uh, I imagine some of them probably even got killed that way. That's why Leiden jars are not to be trifled with. But a capacitor in general, a much smaller capacitor, one of those disc ceramics or, or something that you see more often, does the same thing on a smaller scale. In order to charge the capacitor up, current must flow into one electrode and out of the other. And if we consider current to be the movement of electrons, which is the most common way to imagine it, uh, it's not the formal physicist's way, but the uh, electrical engineer or the ham radio operator or the hobbyist or the electronics layman is easier thinking of electrons as the movement, as the charge carriers that move in order to create a current. In order to charge that capacitor up, a current must flow for a while. It's a large current at first, and it gets smaller and smaller and then levels off once the capacitor attains its full charge. Contrarywise, when you discharge the capacitor through a resistor, uh, it, it, you can di directly discharge it in the current will flow instantly through the conductors and equalize the charge on those electrodes. But current can flow in 
a capacitor, a direct current. More and more at first, or less and less, you know, well, it, it increases rapidly at first and then levels off as it charges up and reaches its full charge. Then when you discharge it through a resistor, it decreases rapidly at first and then more and more slowly. The rate at which the increases and decreases take place depend on the voltage that you apply to the capacitor and also on the amount of charge that the capacitor is capable of holding. So while direct current can't flow, and I use the word flow in quotes because that's a little bit of a misnomer, it can't flow through the dielectric material and therefore can't flow from one electrode to the other. Nevertheless, current can flow into a capacitor and it can flow out. Kind of paradoxical. I, I, I kind of like those paradoxes where on the one hand, if you look at it from one direction, it looks like one thing. And if you look at it from another direction, it looks like something else. Sort of like yours truly, Stan Gibalisco, signing off from Dakota Territory, United States of Anomalies, where we're about to get charged up to millions and millions of volts by a lightning storm. So I better shut up, right? <laughs> so long.